as I was saying, I think, you know, in the world of, of coaching, and that's, that's where we are, right? It doesn't have to do with golf or baseball or tennis or anything. I, I just think there's a huge opportunity to be using social media more effectively. Um, traditionally, what we see, right, is a coach standing in front of a tripod demonstrating how to hold the golf club or a tip to um, throw a football correctly or whatever it is. It's all tips. It's not really moments or things that I think as a coaching community, we can really learn from. So when I saw what you were doing on social media, um, it resonated with me because I would have done the exact same thing had Instagram and all these other platforms actually been around when I was coaching more like yourself. Um, so stoked that we can talk about it. And I guess what was the impetus of you taking these moments and sharing them and putting them out there for people? I, I think I think it sort of stemmed very much from the same um, what you just mentioned of um, – you know, it, I think it's interesting in the coaching world, the, the sort of the idea is to go like gain information, um, learn the craft, learn how to coach, learn how to coach, learn how to coach. And there, and you, and you sort of get rewarded for that, right? It's like you go to all these education events and it's like you learn, 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 learn. And there's nothing talked about at all about running a business. Like it's not even, right. it's even part of the environment. Yeah. And, um, you know, that was interesting to go through. And I, and I think there's merit to that. Like you have to learn what you're doing first before you, before you can kind of learn how to sell and market yourself. Um, but then once you get a base, you know, past that point, it, it's funny, I think with, uh, with sports, it's like, well, since you love what you're doing, you know, it's not a job and, and, and I think people don't treat it as a business. Um, mm. but to, you know, it's the same thing as anything else. If you, I need to, you know, eat and pay bills and I want to travel and, and do stuff and that over requires money, right. In the world we live in. And, um, and I think you know I'm super into um, a lot of people outside of like like Gary Vaynerchuk, like you know you had mentioned before, and, and guys like that. And it's just like it's it's too straightforward to not do right. right? None, none of this stuff is it's simple. It's not an easy thing. It requires you know um, a lot of patience and, and dedication to the process. But um, I think the fruits of what you get at the end are well worth the the time that gets put in. But it, but it's like it's not talked about, right? It's like like I'm happy that we're doing this and. And you're trying to push that. And, um, you know, it's, it's just not part of like the culture of coaching yet, I think. Yeah. And, and I think you said it there almost on accident to where it's simple, but it's not easy in the sense mm -hmm. that you, you do have to stay dedicated to the process. It, you can't capture one thing every once in a while and, and build an audience. You got to stay on it. But at the same time, you don't need fancy equipment. You don't need to be a master video editor. You can just put it out there. Right. And I think at, yeah. I guess maybe tell me the uh, about the first time you put it out there. What kind of nerves were associated with it? Were you concerned that people would bash it or or talk talk you know crap about you or anything like that? Was there any concern there, or you just didn't care, just went for it? No, for sure. I mean, I think like my insecurities as a person are kind of the same as everyone else, right? Yeah. right? I think that um, it, as I started to do it, you know, I started I, I saw some other guys who were putting content out, mm -hmm. and then I started thinking to myself like you know, this is the same stuff I do every day. I, this mm -hmm. is no, uh, you know, better or worse. And then I started to, to make some, um, some videos. It's always interesting in the beginning to hear yourself, uh, talk sure. and watch. Uh, sure. I make all kinds of hand movements and face gestures that I don't realize I'm doing, which is entertaining. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I for sure was like worried, you know, in the beginning more so, which was foolish about, you know, was the coaching good enough? Um, mm -hmm. am I going to say or do something that, that maybe isn't the perfect thing for that person? And, and, um, what would people think about that? But I think as you go, it's, it's, uh, and, and I'm sure there's a lot of other coaches out there who basically are saying the same things I'm saying during the lessons. Sure. Of course. Uh, and that's why I resonated with it. It was like, that's the same thing I would have said. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's not like, I, I'm not putting it out thinking like, okay, here's this new information people need to hear. Right. Uh, you know, no one's talking about this, but it's more so just about, I think, sharing the experience. Mm -hmm. Um, um, building a community, uh, especially, you know, long term from the business perspective, certainly I'm looking to leverage um, these resources and, and eliminate my in-person time, mm -hmm. you know, that I that I need to be there. Mm -hmm. um, so so it's it's sort of all these steps of, you know, it, to going back to your question, the, the whole reason why it started in the first place was, you know, I don't want to stand on a range 50 hours a week for the next 30 years, mm -hmm. right? Like I love to coach don't love doing it 12 hours a day. Don't mm -hmm. love doing it every single day. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but I, I recognize there's going to be parts I don't like, but I don't, I, nor do other coaches need to have to do that forever mm -hmm. to make money. And I think that that's, that's kind of where this conversation stems from. 